live, local, breaking news you can trust. This is the North States News at 5.30. Good evening. Glad to have you with us on a wonderful Wednesday. I'm Mike Mangus. The State Public Utilities Commission will vote tomorrow morning on a PG&E rate increase proposal. The North States News' Ariana Martinez is here to break down how customers feel about the possibility of rates going up. I think I know, Ariana. <laughs> I think you're right, Mike. I feel like almost every day we're talking about something getting more expensive. PG&E plans to increase prices by around 26%. On their website, they say, quote, the proposals aim to strike a balance among strengthening the electric grid and natural gas system, improving safety, and ensuring affordability for customers. We took a look at what some of our viewers have to say about it. So far, it's not a popular idea. A customer in Megalia says in part, quote, $40 a month may not seem like a lot, but if you're a senior with a fixed income, it comes right out of our food budget. A customer in Cottonwood says in part, quote, we are customers, we as customers are not the ones that allowed PG&E's transmission system to deteriorate to the point of constant failure. Then a Chico customer says in part, many people already struggle to pay for these services. This will push many citizens into a bad situation when the cold weather really sets in. There are more than 500 comments when I lo last looked. It's on its page after page of nothing but unhappy customers that, as you go through the website. If you're interested in watching the vote tomorrow online at 11 in the morning or adding your public comment, you can find the link on our website, krcrtv.com. I'll have more information on public comment tonight at 10 and 11. Ariana Martinez, the North States News. Mike, back to you. Thank you, Ariana. Shasta County has launched a Stop Fountain Wind media campaign. The Board of Supervisors voted unanimously to launch it during a meeting last month. The campaign is designed to inform people on the drawbacks to installing wind turbines in eastern Shasta County, like increased wildfire risk. The plan's already been rejected twice by the county, but it's back because a new state energy bill gives the power to approve projects like this to the California Energy Commission. This is actually the first project of its kind that the CEC has the authority to approve uh, without local uh, or yeah, without local input. The results of this project could have a big effect and set a precedent for projects like it across uh, the state of California. So it's not just important to residents in Shasta County, but other rural areas across California will want to be watching closely as well to see, okay, if this passes, could it also happen in our town even if we don't want it to. David says the review period for the Fountain Wind project is 270 days that started back on October 30th. That means the state will make the final decision on the Fountain Wind project sometime next summer. For more information, you can go to stopfountainwind.com. Looking now at Mount Shasta during the last few hours through the Hammond Ranch Alert California camera near Weed. First alert forecaster Sara McCoy is in for Brian Schofield tonight. She's tracking tonight's conditions. Hey, Sara. Hey, Mike. We had some showers this morning, a little bit of some sprinkles across the valley, and we're taking a nice break right now. Temps are pretty cool, but tonight we're going to have some more rain to come. So look at these. I'm going to step off so you can see these showers firing up along the coast there. But look what's coming in right now. Just some clouds. But they're going to see a few isolated showers there along the coast. And then when we move over to the city of Mount Shasta, we've got a chance to see a little snow there as some of those systems move up through Trinity Center, Lakehead, and Mount Shasta. Quite a bit of rain, but also some of that heavier duty stuff. And then moving further south, a lot more rainfall coming up in Red Bluff, Corning and then Orland as well. They're going to be seeing quite a bit of rain there. Somehow Chico is missing a lot of these storms that come through. They've got the least amount of rainfall currently. But a lot of this, Chico might catch an isolated shower or two go, moving through there, along there, and in Orville as well. But look what we've seen for the past 24 hours. Neyland with almost a 1 16th hundredth of an inch. And then we trickle down a little bit less and less. But City of Mount Shasta getting a little bit of that as well. Thanks. Back to you. Thank you, Sara. The Sites Reservoir Project is moving forward through recent actions by Governor Newsom. Sites would store up to 1.5 million acre feet of water pumped up from the Sacramento River and would use existing canals to serve 22 water districts with the new water supply. The North States News, Anna Montemore is in Chico tonight. She says not everybody is on board. Anna. Thank you, Mike. Well, this has been in the planning process for years, and if approved, it could completely change the way that California utilizes its water. But not everyone is a fan. 
with anything like this, this is a four and a half billion dollar project. Time is money. The site's project aims to help California maintain a successful water supply in the face of climate change, weather extremes, and water scarcity. Along with meeting California's goal of expanding above and below ground water storage capacity by four million acre feet. This project and other projects like it need to happen so that we can have a secure water supply for future generations. The project that will be on the west side of the Sacramento Valley, approximately 10 miles west of Maxwell and Glen and Calusa counties, will utilize the existing canals in the area, creating a half a million acre foot reservoir. I think the smartest and the cheapest thing to do is to conserve water, use less, and think about how we're using water rather than just pouring more concrete, trying to hang on to an old way of thinking. Gavin Newsom recently took steps to streamline the environmental approval process earlier this month, once again raising concerns for the friends of the river organization. I'm really trying to hammer home here is that this reservoir has been branded as this kind of green infrastructure answer of the future when the science really, we believe, tells us that that it's not the case and honestly can't really be the case. Recent research done by Tell the Damn Truth, supported by Friends of the River and Patagonia, found that sites will emit 362,000 metric tons of CO2 annually. However, Jerry Brown, director of the project, says that they have worked towards this plan with intentions of having an environmentally friendly impact. We've had numerous meetings on various topics of concern and have made adjustments and modifications to the project to be responsive to those concerns and issues. This project would be the second largest off-stream reservoir in the nation and aims to overall improve California's water supply if approved. This is a priority for our state. We need to act with urgency. I plan on keeping you updated on this project and what it means for California water moving forward. Live in Chico, Anna Montemore, The North State's News. Thank you, Anna. A forum for Shasta County Supervisor candidates should get started in about a half hour at Sequoia Middle School in Reading. The North States News' Tyler Van Dyke is at McLaughlin Auditorium tonight where the doors opened about a half hour ago. Tyler. Good evening. My people are already starting to show up for the forum because it, the doors open at 5. Um, this is being put on by the Shasta County GOP and it will be starting soon at 6 o'clock. It is a forum for our Shasta County Board of Supervisors and State Senate candidates. No matter what happens in the March primary election or the recall attempt of District District 1 Supervisor Kevin Cry, the Board of Supervisors will see a major shakeup. Both Supervisors Mary Rickert and Tim Garman are not running for re-election, opening up at least two seats. Garman represents District 2. The two candidates right now for that are Suzanne Bearmore and Daniel Sloan. Rickert represents District 3, and right now, Winfred Carpenter is the only candidate for that district. In District 4, incumbent Patrick Jones is running for re-election, being challenged by Matt Plummer. There is also Council Member Tanessa Audette running for State Assembly, District 1, and Mark Baird for State Senator. Now, Mike, this forum is being hosted by the Shasta County GOP, but I am told it is open to everyone who wants to come and watch our potential county supervisors next year talk about what and the state senate candidates talk about their ideas for the future of our county and the state for now reporting live in reading tyler van dyke the north states news thank you tyler chico state hosted an event today showing the latest technology in agriculture who needs tractor drivers next Chico State hosted its second annual Precision Ag Day today. Some of the biggest players in technology and agriculture were there to showcase some of the latest industry advancements. The North State's News Munasadek is down on the farm, the Chico State University farm, with a look at some of the new technology. Mana. Good evening, Mike. Yeah, like you said, I'm at the University Farm where that event actually just wrapped up. It featured about 12 companies. These are companies that are really on the cutting edge of what's happening in the world of agriculture right now. Take a look. That included Monarch. They developed a 100% electric and driverless tractor option for farmers and ranchers. They call it basically a new era of farming. They gave live demos for students and visitors from across the North State. They say inventions like this tractor will give people more more time to do other things and possibly get more out of the workday. I mean, it has to make sense. Farmers are businessmen or businesswomen. 
Uh, so it needs to be that first and foremost. It also demonstrates a paradigm shift for a lot of farmers. Uh, farmers, rightfully so, uh, are very traditional. And to adapt to new technology uh, needs to be viable. Precision Ag is happening and it's happening fast. And it's something that is really taking over the world of agriculture immensely in a great way. Now that tractor itself costs $89,000, but there are subsidy programs that will take more than half of that cost off. Another company that attended today was Helio, which is a fully automated crop spraying drone. You can program it and then go on to do other business on the farm. Now I actually spoke to the vice president of that company earlier today. He says it's basically your own personal crop duster, if you will. And it was really fascinating to check out in person. And you can hear from him coming up tonight at 7 o'clock. Uh, for now, reporting live in Chico, Manasotic, the North States News. More rain to come, and with that rain, some thunderstorms throughout, and then some mountain snow as well. We'll show you where it's going to get the most coming up in your first alert forecast. And it was the first ever breakfast to honor North State health care providers, Shasta Health Rock Stars, when we come back. Is National Rural Health Day. A lot of work is being done in health care in Shasta County. That was recognized today, as well as the need for more, along with more health care providers. Some of the top individuals in the health care arena were honored during the first ever Shasta Health Rockstars Breakfast in Reading, sponsored by the Health Alliance of Northern California, whose executive director is trying to develop more collaboration. Our system is very fragmented, so we are doing what we can to bring everybody together, to collaborate, to maybe make sure we can do the best for our patients and move them through the system. Individuals in nine categories were singled out for the Rockstar Awards, including Shasta Regional Medical Center's Director of Cardiovascular Services, Brandon Jennings. He's humbled, but also says he's part of a team. I am just a member of a team, you know, that takes, uh, it takes all uh, a multidisciplinary team, including physicians, coordinators, doctors, nurses, everybody. And a special advocate leader award for Shasta Community Health Center CEO Dean Germano, who is retiring next March. But he says that can wait. I'm at peace with it, and I've told people don't keep asking me about it because it's pedal to the metal until I'm almost done. I, I, I have too much to do. I think it is so important to get a job in the medical field, whatever that might be, and really feel out what's best for you before you invest a bunch of time and money into higher education. A brief video shown to the gathering illustrates some of the challenges of working in rural health care, but that also presents opportunities. Our workforce challenges are immense. Um, after the pandemic, some folks decided they wanted to leave health care in favor of virtual jobs. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities. Now you can find more information, explore careers, as well as look at health care job openings at Mercy Medical Center Reading and other providers at ShastaHealthRockStars.org. Live pictures now toward downtown Reading from the Hasselrood Law Skycam. First alert forecaster Sarah McCoy is in for Brian Schofield. She's tracking some unsettled weather. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Mike. Unsettled weather indeed. Right now we're taking a little bit of a break, but as you see as we go into those overnight hours, we've got some more rain coming up in the North State and in the Valley, and then it's some snow here in Lassen County as well. But that comes up from the south as well as the coast, and then some scattered showers beginning Friday, but mostly Thursday and Friday throughout the days should be calm. It's the overnight hours that we could see some showers, and then the unsettled part comes in because we also should see some overnight thunderstorms from Thursday to Saturday, whether that's overnight or Saturday during our heavy rain day. But look at this here along the coast and then in the valley as well. And then Saturday is where we've got the entire North State there covered pretty much with a lot of that rainfall. And then things will clear out by Sunday. We've got cloud coverage and then things finally looking a lot nicer by Sunday night. But the, our rain estimates for now through Thursday morning, just a pinch there along the coast and then more in the valley even. And then by Friday morning, things are ramping up a little bit with over a quarter of an inch in Redding. And then look at this by Saturday after we get all that heavy rain, things really moving up from the south up but Chico with 35 hundredths of an inch and that is still a little bit along the coast here but Redding with quite a bit as well in Red Bluff there getting getting pretty wet getting splashy out there and then look at this almost an inch in Red Bluff by Sunday 
and then along the coast. We're getting some more now, finally. City of Mount Shasta mostly worried about some of that snow up there, which we'll show you here. It's going to be seen a little bit there. It's not quite coming up on our snow estimate radar. Lassen County, though, with quite a bit. That's covering a large area over there in Lassen, but quite a bit of snowfall as well with some of this rain as it moves into those higher elevation areas. Our lows tonight, though, with some of that rainfall, however, we are still looking relatively comfortable. Paradise in Oroville with 52. Bernie and Chester even looking pretty nice above freezing. Alturas 34. City of Manchester at 39, but Reading at 50. Chico 51. So that seven day forecast again. So through Thursday and Friday nights is when we could see a thunderstorm. But Saturday we've got some of that heavy rain, so there might be a little ac electric activity in the atmosphere on Saturday as well. But then Sunday things are going to clear up with a high of 69 and then 70s for the beginning of your work week. 69 on Wednesday. So be wary on Saturday. It's going to be a good college football watching day if you want to stay in and watch some college football because we're going to be seeing a lot of that rain. Chico as well, not quite hitting 70 with 69 on Monday, Tuesday and 68 on Wednesday. So relatively nice beginning to your work week, but tomorrow we could see some isolated showers throughout Thursday and Friday, but that overnight rain is going to really be when it comes and then Saturday at 61, but Sunday 68. So things are going to hopefully clear out and look not like a lot nicer. As well as along the coast, we've got 63, 61 on Saturday, 59 on Sunday. So staying with the 60s and then 59 on Sunday. But again, some overnight showers here and then a big rainfall coming on Saturday. Thanks. Back to you. College football Saturday. The border A Sinclair report is next. There are issues with our signal. If you're struggling to watch us tonight, know that it's not you, it's us. Our engineers are working on fixing the issue, but you can always watch online at krcrtv.com. It's frustrating, I know. Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas over the handling of our border with Mexico. Here's Sinclair's Christine Frazau. It has been one of the greatest challenges for the Biden administration. How to respond to the influx of migrants showing up every day at the southern border. We do not minimize the, um, the significance of the challenge at the southern border. It is reflective of a challenge that is gripping our entire hemisphere and in fact the world. But Republicans blame the Biden administration itself for changes in policy. They say dismantled the security system at the border, including canceling the Remain in Mexico program and asylum cooperative agreements and scaling back construction of the border wall. As a result, people tested the system, were released into the country, called home, and millions more came. A lot like a college town bar that doesn't card. Committee Chairman Mark Green and fellow Republicans releasing a new report laying out the cost in dollars, more than $150 billion, to fund increased demands in law enforcement, housing and shelter, emergency medical care, and educational costs. It's not enough that drugs are pouring in, criminals and national security threats, jeopardizing every aspect of our nation's safety and homeland security. There's a real cost to U.S. taxpayers. Now 26 attorneys general have written a letter accusing the administration of being not just derelict in their duties, they are complicit, they say ignoring federal law and adopting policies to speed up the rapid influx of millions of immigrants. Also asking Congress to pass legislation to give states more power to combat illegal immigration. Also this week, New York City announcing the cost of dealing with the migrant crisis there will mean major cuts to its budget, including slashing more than 200 school safety agents and scaling back hiring of new police officers and on overtime. It's going to be extremely painful for New Yorkers, and that is why we continue to say we need help. Help needed in big cities and border towns nationwide. I'm Christine Frizzau reporting. On a story from last night, two people have been arrested after a standoff in downtown Reading. Police say at about 5.30 they tried to pull over 28-year-old Kerry Wilkes Nicholson and 33-year-old Daniel Gregory, who has an extensive criminal history. Wilkes Nicholson then drove around erratically while Gregory jumped out and ran. 
They eventually found him hiding inside an apartment. The crisis intervention response team eventually got him to surrender after a brief standoff. Both have been booked into the Shasta County Jail. All right, I'm going to try to tie that into weather. I was out there for a while, uh, Sarah, and it was raining. <laughs> yes, no, definitely, and more to come as well. I wanted to make sure you saw these inland highs one more time. So Thursday and Friday, we're getting up there almost to 70, and then all of that rain is going to come Saturday. But remember, our chance to have a thunderstorm is about 10% right now on Thursday, and then it's going to grow through Saturday. We might have a thunderstorm, but look at this, 70s on Monday, so not too bad. Very